everyone, I'm Green and welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I got the cross member fabricated to hold up the transmission and transfer case in my diesel swap TJ Wrangler. Now, since that video, I have painted the cross member and I also fixed the one nut cert that I didn't drill correctly. So now this fits in there perfectly. With the cross member done, I actually need now to pull the entire drivetrain minus the engine out. I need to reinstall all the studs into the transfer case. Right now there's only two. Then once I get the transfer case all squared away, I need to move on to the transmission. What I need to do there is clearance the bell housing for the starter on the adapter plate. And there are a couple other things on the transmission I believe I need to figure out as well, but I just can't remember off the top of my head. So with that said, I'm gonna start getting to work. With the transfer case out, I can now install the four remaining studs. All right, I got all the studs in, ended up just having to use two nuts, tighten them together. So now that this is kind of set up and done, I'm gonna get this back on a dolly on the floor. I'm gonna move the camera and I'm gonna remove the AW4 off of my BEW TDI because now there's a couple things I need to do to that transmission as well. So I have the AW4 automatic out of my TJ Wrangler. This is the adapter plate. So I put two fasteners real quick into the adapter plate so I don't have to worry about it falling off. But as you can see, I have to clearance this area of the bell housing to make room for this Toyota starter. So that's gonna be what I work on now. I have the bell housing clearance for the starter for my adapter plate. Now, the way I did this was probably a little bit unconventional. I'm sure there were other ways of doing it that would have been easier. I just used the tools that I had and it ended up working really well. On the starter though, TD Conversions does tell you to stick a nut in between the gear and the housing so you know how far the gear is gonna come out. And they recommend a half inch nut. And I found one that was a hair over a half inch wide, which ended up working perfectly. I've got plenty of clearance all the way around and I'm really happy with it. To install the crankshaft adapter, I used two bolts to help press the crankshaft adapter onto the end of the crankshaft of my BEW TDI. I then installed each bolt to make sure everything lined up before removing each bolt, applying Loctite, and then torquing all the bolts to the recommended torque settings in the instructions. Next, I installed all the bolts attaching the engine side plate to the block of my BEW TDI. I have the engine side adapter plate bolted and torqued to my BEW TDI. I have the crankshaft adapter installed and torqued in the segments, 20 foot pounds, 40 foot pounds, and then 60 foot pounds, and everything's looking really good. Now the transmission side plate, I just read the instructions. It takes these bolts, they're gonna go in here. There are six of them. They have a Nord style lock washer. Unfortunately, the instructions call for blue Loctite, of which I don't have any at the moment. So I'm gonna run out, get some, and I will be back. I'm now about to install the transmission plate, which is gonna 
go like that. I am using the A spot on the engine plate with the number two spot on the transmission plate. Now, to do that, I'm going to be using these bolts with this very special kind of lock washer that grips on both sides. I will also be using blue Loctite, even though it looks like it's red, it is actually blue Loctite. And we will be torquing all of the bolts first to 20 foot pounds, then 40 foot pounds, and then per the instructions, one last time to 56 foot pounds. So I'm gonna get to work. Now it's time to install the flex plate, which I actually need to figure out what the orientation is supposed to be. That looks right. So that goes on. This piece also goes on, which I have to figure out the orientation for. And then I have to put the six bolts in and the final torque for those bolts is 105 foot pounds. So I'm gonna work on that now. With the flex plate installed, now we can focus on installing the starter. Now, according to the instructions, we need to install the starter, pull the starter gear out, check the tolerance between the starter gear and the teeth on the flex plate. If that is within spec, the next thing we have to do actually is trigger the starter without the transmission on, make sure everything spins freely and make sure the starter gear also retracts. So I'm gonna work on getting the starter installed and we'll start checking all those tolerances. I have the starter hooked up, I have a battery in it, and I have power going to the starter and it's keyed via the key switch. This wire here is what powers the ECU for my TDI. So there is no way for my diesel engine to start, which honestly makes me feel better because I don't want it running. So I'm going to quickly test to see if it spins and retracts correctly. I wasn't expecting that. It looked like it had enough clearance. Well, time for some research. As you saw in that last clip, I was having some issues getting the start to engage with the flex plate for my AW4 automatic transmission. Going back to the instructions that TD Conversion provides, there was actually a section that talked about starter engagement and clearances. Now, I had the tolerance for the gear meshing into the flex plate when I pulled the starter gear out, but there was another measurement about how far the gear had to be away from the flex plate. So, checking into those, I did some measurements and it turns out I needed some shims. And this is where I'm really impressed with TD Conversions. I reached out to them, because it says to email them if you need shims. I did, I explained what I was doing, the measurements I was seeing, and they shipped me out shims for the starter, for their transmission adapter, and it got here in about three days, which is incredible. So now we're gonna get back under the Jeep again. We're gonna install the shims and see if we can't get the starter engaging with the flex plate correctly. Per the instructions and my measurements, I went ahead and installed two of the shims that were sent to me. We're gonna turn the key real quick, see if it engages the flex plate, turns the motor and retracts. That looks good, let's see if it'll do it a second time. I'm gonna put it in slow-mo real quick just so I can get a 
better image of what it's doing. All right, everyone, that's all the time I have for this video if I wanna get it out this coming weekend. Huge shout out to TD Conversions. These shims worked out perfectly and their instructions were spot on. They told you how to measure it and what to measure to make sure that your starter has the correct clearance. And they could have not been more helpful in trying to troubleshoot this. So again, huge shout out to TD Conversions. But we're making really good progress. The adapter is installed, flex plate is installed, the starter works, I've clearanced the bell housing. So in the next video, I'll be working on installing the bell housing back onto my AW4. I'll be working on putting fluid into my new heavy duty but stock stall torque converter. And hopefully by the end of that video, the entire drive line will be installed permanently in my TJ Wrangler along with the drive shaft installed. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again sometime soon. Goodbye.